we are here at Paris Games Week 2023 and I am joined by Stalker 2 developers. Uh, thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity to make this interview. Uh, could you start by uh, introducing yourself? Uh, my name is Zakhar Bocharov and I'm PR manager at Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl, and uh, we are pleased to have this opportunity as well. I'm Eugene Bazarov, you could know me like Makalke on Discord, if you use in Discord our official server, I'm a community manager at JC Game World. So ever since uh, Gamescom, GSC has been showcasing Stalker 2 and uh, its demo at various game events, right, all over the world. And so I would like to ask the following, uh, what kind of feedback and data are you looking to collect at these events and how does it perhaps influence the ongoing development of the game? Okay, I probably will answer. We are looking for every feedback what we can to take because it's really important to us. We're trying to ask people about um, about feelings, how was it in general, and understand what pe what people do like, what people doesn't uh, don't like, and in general, it's really important to understand in what way we could move and to take this experience with speaking with people and understand just uh, what could more be Polish or what could be more like interesting to people in general. All right. Um, speaking of the development, uh, we are still looking at a quarter one 2024 release date. Uh, so my next question is generally, how is the development currently going and uh, how is the team feeling about how things are going at the moment? Uh, I have a feeling that we are in the final stages of the development. Uh, the content is basically in-game and we are just doing the polish and uh, we decided to go with the release window so we can be exactly confident with the release date then we are announcing the exact release date. Um, yeah, we are probably going through one of the most brightest moments in our marketing campaign because we are showing like the demo, we actually wanted to show it on Gamescom first and then according to the feedback and the positive uh, exception, acceptance of the whole thing we decided to expand, we decided to show it to new gamers, to all the, all the markets available. So yeah, while we are here the team is basically working on polishing the game and even the build we are showing at, at, in, in Paris, it's it's slightly better than Gamescom build, more polished, slightly better graphics and stuff like that, lesser bugs, etc., etc. So yeah, it's the final stages of the development basically. So it's just like finishing the game and uh, getting to the release finally. <laughs> uh, that's great to know, of course. Um, so for sure, the studio has been through a lot, right? Um, but you kept working on the game against all odds. Uh, were there any elements, pieces of media perhaps, that inspired you and gave motivation to continue the development? Uh, I think first of all, it's our situation it's not easy at all and you can know it. Because we have a lot of issues what we had before and right now we are on the war. Our employees in Kyiv struggle with the, any problem from the Russian Federation day by day. Before it was a Covid, right now it difficult situation for our country, for us too. We have a two studio set now, one studio staying in the Czech Republic uh, in Prague, another studio with our employee staying in Kyiv in Kyiv and in Ukraine and around Kyiv too. It's like uh, more than game for us. We hope to finish this game and to show our ideas, our passion, our love for this universe and we do what we can. It's one of the important to us to show how we can create and to show to our community what we prepare for them. Uh, I would like to add a little bit. Uh, I think the main inspirational for us was like Chernobyl itself, Chernobyl exclusion zone. And the team went there throughout the different times of the year. It looks quite different in summer and in winter, for example. And we actually scan things there to put them in game. So the, the, the biggest inspirational was Chernobyl. Now it's impossible to go there because of the war. Uh, and um, in this situation, under this pressure laid on the team, 
the game they are working on, it becomes inspirational on its own. And what I mean is like some people confess that um, they, if they think too much about their relatives, about war, about what is either left in Ukraine if they move to Czech Republic or happening right now in Ukraine if they stay there. So basically if they work on the game they feel slightly relieved psychologically because they have something to put their efforts in to ease their thinking about the bad things for a tiny moment. So it's a strange situation, strange probably, uh, where be, like the game on itself, like making the game, is an inspiration for making it further. All right, uh, that's, that's very nice to hear. Um, going into more specific questions, I really wanted to ask something about the map of the zone. Uh, in the original games, the map was split into several areas separated by loading screens, right? But the new game will have an open world map. So I was wondering, what are some of the challenges the team faced while transforming the old map of the zone into this new seamless world? Um. Level design wise, uh, it meant like blending old and new locations, uh, at the same time upgrading previous ones to the level of the new ones. So. To, to make it all a coherent experience so it can it of course you cannot just replicate the real zone in game oh, certain inspirationals are presented certain places from the real uh, zone but they need to be mixed a little bit they need to be remade a little bit because it's a game after all it, it should be fun to play uh, technologically wise uh, it also requires to utilize what Unreal Engine 5 offers uh, it's a pretty complicated streaming system because you need to load it from the SSD and SSD is like uh, minimum system requirements for our game because it's needed to actually load all the stuff so it's about also finding some technological solutions using new technologies like SSD and Unreal Engine 5 for the whole thing to stream and to pack and to unpack properly so it can be loaded on the go. Creating big open world like this, it's a technological challenge. I guess it's, it's, it's probably true for all the developers, but we are speaking for ourselves. And for us, there were certain challenges we needed to overcome for the whole experience to be like without loading screens, to be, to, 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 to be streamed while you go. Uh, we don't have transport system, so it's just like going on foot. But at the same time, it's always like the weather is changing, there are new locations, there are anomalous stuff. So yeah, it was both about like creating the game world that's actually fun to be in and doing it at a certain degree of technological um, technological um, breakthrough if I can say so for this to happen um, simul uh, to happen um, on the go something else I had in mind is the OST uh, in the previous games the background music was played depending on the area you were on uh, for example, there is the theme of cordon, the theme of garbage, and so on. Uh, with Stalker 2 being open world, uh, will specific locations still have their own theme? or And how is the ambient music going to work in general? I think we can't say about it right now specifically, but we would say we're trying to put a lot of style of music and you will understand what is going on by music too. Music will add to you emotion and atmosphere, additional atmosphere, like uh, what is going on around you, music will put push on it and you will feel it. But without any specific answer right now, let's see what will be on the rise day. I have a feeling that a tiny bit we can say about is like uh, it um, uh, echoing what uh, Eugene actually said. Uh, the music, it, it kind of changes throughout the process. So. Um, there are certain layers coming in, coming out as you play. For example, to resemble, I don't know, the, the fighting scene or exploration or stuff like that. So it's not just like a track playing on, on, on the background, but rather something similar to, I don't know, probably, probably, probably Doom Eternal, probably Metal Gear Rising, like examples from my side. So there is some kind of a more complicated uh, multi-layered thing. And probably that's where we uh, end today.
answering this question. All right, thank you. Uh, so something more dynamic, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I have another question about the OST. I noticed that the sound design in the latest Bolts and Bullets trailer uh, was absolutely amazing. Thank you. Uh, and last time you released the OST for the Come To Me trailer. So, you know, the, the OST without the voices. Mm -hmm. And that was great because the fans were able to create their own voiceovers. Uh, and I even made a French version out of it, of Come To Me. So I would really like to do the same for, uh, for okay. Bolts and Bullets. So could you tell me if you are maybe planning to release the OST for Bolts and Bullets? Maybe in the future we have a couple of ideas about our music in general. Maybe you would see soundtrack after the release. Maybe we will prepare it for our fans. Right now on our YouTube channel you can find a couple of soundtrack from our game, what was before. And I think you will see more soundtracks from our playlist close to the rise days and for sure after the rise days. I don't think I have too much to add on that, I don't think so. Okay, well, that, that's that's great to know. I mean, the, the musics that are currently posted are very, very good, I think, great, so that's nice. Um, moving on to another topic, one thing that is often brought up when people think about Stalker is the NPC AI and the AI life. Yeah. Um, starting with the former, I think it would be very interesting from both a gameplay and a technical perspective if different NPCs have different behaviors and AIs depending on their rank, experience of the zone and maybe faction fighting style, if that makes sense. Uh, is this something the team has been thinking about and maybe worked on for Heart of Chernobyl? Um, I think it basically works kind of similar to what b was before, but in bigger scale, because it's a seamless open world. Uh, we had a really funny bug, by the way, uh, in Poznan, back in Poznan, I guess, where A-Life actually accidentally triggered throughout the first cutscene. And so uh, people came to, to, to like, the cutscenes are in-game, yeah. and so the NPCs just came to fight with the, with the player while he was still like going through the dog section at the beginning of the demo. So it's basically, it's just like a net of uh, artificial intelligence working in the background constantly. Uh, and um, there will be like, deep, it can be a relatively small situation, like a lot, uh, many times in our demo, uh, um, there is a certain location with a couple of bloodsuckers there. Uh, and uh, um, sometimes like the bandits, or uh, they come to fight with, with, uh, alongside with the player. Some players, they don't even fight with bloodsuckers directly. They just lure them to fight with the bandits or with other NPCs out there and it kind of works. Uh, I guess it will be more about um, more about the zone feeling alive, uh, pun intended, uh, smaller situations here and there, but if it happens so that the event is relatively big, so like a group of people fighting against a group of other people or a, a group of mutants and stuff, it will, be on a, it will be an event of a bigger scale, but it happens like naturally. Uh, so I can't say it's like intended to be like a faction versus faction fight. It's just like they they really interact with each other when you explore the zone. It can go like any way from there. Next, I would like to talk a bit about artifacts uh, because they are an important part of uh, the Stalker world, and uh, we haven't learned much about them so far. We did learn about new anomalies and some new me uh, anomaly mechanics, but uh, what about the artifacts? Uh, can we expect maybe new effects and new ways to use them? Yes, for sure, because the new anomalies will give to you new artifacts. And I can say specifically about it, it more right now, because we prepare something to you. And we will share by our, by our new artifacts more close and close to the revise. But in general, you will see more effects. At more interesting combination with one to each other artifacts, what can give to you some kind of impact to your style of playing. Maybe you run more, you will live more and in general like this. But yeah, we hope uh, so like artifacts will give to you 
another style of play and will change your style of play in general? I, uh, I mostly think it's about the amount of content. So it's like, it's a bigger game. So there are just like more anomalies. So there are just like more artifacts. And uh, uh, while I don't know any exact example I can share right now, uh, I, I'm just pretty sure that the scaling works in the way you will discover more, you will find more, and then you will see how it influences your playstyle. I also think of a couple of mechanics we have in our mind about like interacting with the artifacts and what you can actually do with them, but I don't think we can announce that at the moment. So probably it goes like this. All right, well, it's still great to know that we can expect some great things. Uh, I'm sure we won't be disappointed. Um, going back to more general questions, uh, during Gamescom, GSC released a press kit uh, on their website, which contains a lot of very useful information about Stalker 2. Uh, however, the kit is incomplete, uh, as it does not have the Bolts and Bullets trailer, for example. And we are probably going to get more fresh news in the future right so are you planning to update the press kit when more info comes I, I think so like there is no big idea behind this exact move frankly speaking because uh, the press kit was just finished uh, last days before Gamescom I guess and uploaded to our site so we just didn't include the Gamescom trailer there I'm pretty much sure we are doing that as soon as we have like new trailers new b-rolls screenshots I, I have a feeling we will be just uploading a new version uh, also when we release something uh, we always publish it on our social media uh, we publish uh, arts without with and without watermarks as far as I remember all, all, all the videos I guess like they're always on our channels so if you just follow our socials you will be good but at the same time I think we will we will update the, the, the that thing okay that's great uh... Since the public has known about the game being in development for a long time now, there has been many discussions about it uh, over the last few years. Within these discussions, are there any misconceptions about the game that you would like to clear up? It's a bit of a difficult question, I know, but... I can give a broader context. Uh, so... Um... It was a complicated game from the beginning, right? It was ambitious, it was big, it was a sequel to iconic franchise. It was a pretty big time gap between the previous game. Uh, we announced it in 2018, but we don't telling whether we started developing it actually. So probably it was some time before. Um, and then, then we started working on it. The COVID happened. When after the COVID happened, the war happened. After the war happened, the fire happened in our Prague office. Sorry, it's a nervous laughter, obviously. So the complications, they just keep coming. And uh, for a big AAA game, a big development cycle is okay, because it's hard to make. Games are hard to make. Especially when you use like a new engine on the market, Unreal 5. And we appreciate it because of the global illumination, because all the stuff it offers in terms of the photoreal quality of the picture we're really aiming for but it's a new technology it's so, it's something you need to get acquainted with it's something you need to get the most use of uh, we are do we are doing much bigger emphasis on uh, the story we do a lot of motion capture uh, there are a lot of directed sections and like in come to me trailer for example there is a cutscene at the beginning always the cutscenes there weren't so many cutscenes in stalker like ever it was a couple of cutscenes and then it was just dialogues. It's mu much bigger emphasis on the story, much bigger emphasis on the non-linear uh, 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 non side of things. You cannot see everything in one walkthrough. So it was an ambitious game and then in ju it just fell under the most stressful circumstances you can imagine for the development because like basically speaking back last year it's not about like developing something it's about we need to save people we need to relocate we need to find a new way to work then it's like in our check office is like we need a motion capture 
probably we need like to uh, we need to 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 make an English, a new English voiceover. It, it, so it, it's about complications, making this process of of uh, developing the game even more complicated. And we people tend to say that it's like it's super long development. It kind of is, but at the same time it's super explainable because it's a triple A game being made during the war, during the world pandemic, stuff like that. So um, I don't think. Um, Obviously, there are people now who are not so eager for us to make a good game. So I'm speaking about uh, probably people from the country in war with Ukraine. Uh, and uh, probably there are some skeptical players uh, which think that uh, I only believe when I see it. And I kind of understand that approach. And they still going to be... Uh, pleasantly surprised when it releases. Um, at the same time, there are a lot of people supporting us. So I don't think there is like a big amount of misconceptions if we look at the overall amount of our feedback. So people either understand it or the uh, or the hardcore fans and they are looking very closely to the whole thing or people just waiting for the game to release and to see by themselves about the quality and about the stuff i understand both of them so it, it, i i just don't think if we give a broader context of this exact development i don't think there is much room for misconceptions because you just like you just see it on the surface. So the problems there here, it's the pandemic, it's war, like they're obvious. And yeah, a big development cycle as well. Probably Eugene has something to add, I don't know. And I would say in addition to information, first of all, we have an amazing war of Stalker in general. It's one of the biggest game for all of us because we grew up on Stalker and it's important to understand how to work with it. We have to work uh, with this war, with these stories, with all respects because a lot of fans who, knew, who do know about the Stalker, who do know about the, this story and we want to work with this with all respect, with all passion what we have and to work real, real um, like in the right way and to explain our fan new story on this amazing story in general and to put our hearts our ideas and for sure ideas from our community to this game too because our community is so active a lot of ideas a lot of interesting things what we had right now it's like ideas from our community too and we're trying to create this game like with you guys and it's real important to us to work with this in general a couple like together okay thank you for the answer personally i can say i will wait any amount of time needed i'll be there when it releases um okay uh, there used to be a way for people to ask questions directly uh, on the official Stalker Discord server so that uh, the community can connect with the developers. You know, the famous Ask uh, GSC channel, which unfortunately does not exist anymore. Uh, are there any plans to make something similar again? Maybe an open Q&A where the fans can post their questions? It's a good question. Yeah, it's. I think it's my, on my side because we are with community speaking on Discord. But right now, I think the ask is closed. But we hope so. It will be open again, close to the release day. Because right now we don't have so many information what we can share like uh, in online stuff but we will prepare for it and we will we thinking about it all the time and. I think you will see something like this, maybe you will change direction of the Ask GC chat a little bit, but in general for sure we all the time stay in contact, keep in touch with our community, you can find us everything, everywhere where you want, Twitter, Instagram, Ask on Discord in, our, uh, in other chats or in personal message, everywhere on Steam for sure, on everywhere where you can find us we will answer to you and we try to keep in touch day by day second by second with our community all right thanks uh, okay we are almost finished uh, now a very simple question when can we expect to get fresh stalker 2 news 
it's literal right now. We are playing on demo. You can play on our demo on our events, and it's real fresh news, I would say. But in general, um, without any specific date, but for sure close to the right date, we will see more more information about Stalker. I think we already have uh, some exciting news on our side within the development team. I cannot announce them publicly just yet, but we're always cooking something exciting. And uh, yeah, I think you will be pleasantly surprised in the foreseen future. I think so. Great. Okay, uh, wrapping up, last question. Is there anything else you would like to say? Thank you for staying with us, it's really important. Uh, these years, these months, these years, so difficult for all of us, we, know, we do know it. But we are not alone, it's real important to understand. Our community staying with us, asking with us, speaking with us about the game, about the life, about the everything what is going on. It's like passion by day by day and we are not alone and we still have our community, huge community. What, what would want to play on, on Stalker and honestly we want to share a lot but we have to do it in the right way and we're trying to do it in the right way and it, thank you for your passion and for your activity and for everything what you're doing for us we really do this game with you guys it's main idea from my side I think uh, I agree with everything Eugene said uh, it's probably like it's probably the best period in this development for marketing team because we finally see like people play and for the development team of course as well finally people are playing the game they are enjoying it it's all coming all together we know we're doing polishing we know we're full head we're going full head to the release it's all starting to to boil and the emotions they are presented uh, I think that uh, First of all, there is a lot of appreciation from French community. We always see France in, in the top regions when we see the stats of our trailers. So it's always there. And that's why we're here as well. Um, and I understand for some, some French players, probably Stalker 2 won't be exactly the game they usually play because it's like it's more on the survival difficulty and the strange environment stuff um, i would i would like to encourage those who are not like hardcore fans who know you guys but probably you're publishing this for people out there i would like to encourage them to try the game first of all because it can be their next favorite thing uh, like it was i don't know some time ago uh, dark souls was a strange hardcore game no one understood so probably it's your next favorite um, and uh, the, the the next thing um, now for us it's a game that presents ukraine in the world and it was a game that presented Ukraine and the world previously and now it's like same but much much more important so I would also encourage people to to try it in these optics so something from a country that has its own culture uh, pretty harsh destiny and uh, probably a, a game dev industry on its own that creates something about Ukraine uh, and uh, something really distinguishable and I want to cover all of these messages in real appreciation from the French community because like without uh, exaggeration there is a lot of interest and we appreciate it and we want to accumulate it so thank you so much thank you yeah. I, I think the the French community is that big maybe because the original games had a French voice acting oh. and that's why also I, I wanted to make the well, new trailers no 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 it, okay. but I just wanted to say that and uh, that's why I wanted to make the new trailers in French as well Okay. I, just, uh, I think that's maybe the, re the reason. But yeah, thank you very much for this interview. Wonderful opportunity for, for everybody. And I didn't expect you to answer all of the questions, but you did amazing. So thank you very much. You didn't break the sweat. Thank and you so much. Yeah. The questions were really interesting and precise. Yeah, yeah, yeah.